The information discussed in this PillCast episode are merely opinions and do not constitute formal policy or legal guidance of any kind. Hello and welcome to another PillCast, the video blog where we talk about all of the important procurement concepts in 10 minutes or less. We guarantee it. I'm Scott Simpson with the Procurement Innovation Lab. And I'm Trevor Wagner, also with the Phil. Today, we're going to be talking something about something that we all dislike, but that we all prepare for anyways, the dreaded protest. Dun, dun, dun. There's not much that we can do to prevent a protest, but there's certain things that we can do to prepare for one. So let's talk about the protest timeline. I'd say that the worst part about a protest is the possible stay in performance. That's when a newly awarded contract has to stop work because a protest has been filed. But a stay in performance doesn't happen with all protests. So FAR 33103 states that if a protest is received within 10 days after contract award or within five days after a debriefing date, whichever is later, then the CEO shall immediately suspend performance until the protest is resolved. And that is why it's super important to provide a timely debriefing. If you awarded a contract on the first of the month, then a protest must be filed by the 11th in order to have that stay in performance. So long as that 10th day doesn't fall on a weekend or other federal holiday. Uh, So Scott, if I look at my calendar for the month of July and July 11th falls on a Sunday, Does that mean their protest window would then extend to Monday? That's right, Trevor. So when you think of debriefing timelines, nothing is due by a vendor on a Saturday, Sunday, or holiday. But if a company requests a debrief and the debriefing isn't provided until July 10th or that 10th day, then the company gets another five days to file its protest and still receive a stay in performance. So by delaying that debriefing, we're giving companies a lot of extra time to file that protest. Now, I'm a visual person. Is there any way we can illustrate this process in a way that makes it easy to digest? But of course. So here's your award timeline. Now, the FAR says that an unsuccessful offer has three days to request a debrief. And a lot of times they request it faster, but they have up to three days. Next, the FAR says that the CEO should provide the debrief within five days when possible. Now, if both of those things are true, then I'm already up to eight days. And remember, the FAR says an unsuccessful offer has 10 days after contract award or five days after their debriefing, whichever is later. So here, five days after their debriefing is 13 days. I gave them an extra three days to stew over whether they wanted to file a protest. Now, let me make sure I can understand this. I make an award and the unsuccessful offer requests their debriefing within three days. But this time I am prepared. And before I make the award, I created all the materials I would need to debrief. And I provided the debriefing within just two days instead of five. So now the unsuccessful offer has five days after the debriefing to file a protest, which is the exact same amount of time as the 10 days after award. Perfect. Exactly. Now, something you might not realize is that the day of the week you make an award can also have a big impact on a vendor's time to protest. Friday is actually the best day of the week to make an award. Let's take a look at the calendar to see why. Mm. You can see here that we make award on Friday and the clock starts ticking that next day, Saturday. Now, it doesn't matter that the clock starts to tick on Saturday because it's a weekend. It just matters if that last day or something occurs on a Saturday. So three days later, Monday, vendors must request their debrief. That's perfect. And as long as I'm quick and provide those debriefs on either Tuesday or Wednesday, then the protest clock aligns. 10 days after the award, and five days after the debrief is provided is the same day, Monday. That is the day that they have to protest in order to receive that stay in performance. The only exception is if that Monday is a federal holiday. Uh, You know, the one thing that always stuck with me in the debriefing timeline is that the timeliness clock starts ticking from the date I offer the debriefing. 
if live or in person. If I offer company A that Wednesday and they can't make it for some reason, then that doesn't matter since it was offered and the timeliness clock starts ticking all the same. Now, in the version that you mentioned, Scott, that might have uh, just implications for the written debriefings, but you can still do this all the same with in-person or oral debriefings by offering them that Tuesday or Wednesday to keep the clock going and stay within that 10-day time frame. Great tra point, Trevor. If you all out there listening or watching have any points, why not send us an email, drop them in the chat, connect with us on Procurement Connect. That's all we've got today. Thanks for joining us and see you next time.